Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about two-stroke induction and the differences. Um, recently I watched a video made by uh, Tommy Bikes or Tommy Griffin. I'm going to look it up real quick. Um, he had a good point on talking about intake duration timing and the differences. I don't know if I'm going to pull this up very quick. Tom Bike. Tom Bikes. Where is it? Come on. Tommy Motorized Bikes. Let's see if that pulls it up. Ms. Roll, da, da, da. Trying to find the video. There it is, Big T's. So anyway, look at those videos real quick. He uh, had a video, um, Motorized Bike, Piston Port versus Reed and Intake. So basically what I got for you today is we're going to talk about a piston port a basically it's like a, a reed valve piston port but it's a reed induction that kind of goes down into the case and then basically a case reed um i don't really have a cylinder i mean i could go get one but you get the idea so anyway um tommy was talking about differences in port duration for piston ports um he hit on some good subjects, but he left a couple out, and I want to fill in the gaps. So I told him I'd make another video. I'm going to put this down for a second and draw a little motor. It's going to be really cheesy. Let's see if we can draw a plane. Um, basically, the main difference between a piston port, port read, and case read is just the induction and what it has to do with timing. And if it is a closed loop, uh, style um, closed loop with the crankcase or if it's open loop with the crank crankcase um, basically what that means is on a piston port per cycle it only can have a certain amount of fuel in the crankcase uh, that it can push up and push into the combustion chamber whereas a port read and a case read the amount of fuel it can push into the combustion chamber is quite a bit more than just a piston port. Um, reason being is when the pipe pulls on, like right when the exhaust port opens, it sends a pressure wave out. What that does is it creates a vacuum behind the pressure wave, which pulls all the fuel from the crankcase through the transfers and into the combustion area and part of it out the pipe. Um, well, on a piston port with the piston window closed for the intake, it can only get what's in the bottom end of the case and can't pull in the intake. Whereas a port reed, um, when you start pulling on the pipe, uh, the reeds stay open and will pull fuel into the crankcase and into the combustion chamber um, pretty much 180 degrees or more. And same with a case reed, the... Uh, it, the pipe will pull and it won't stop flowing the fuel whereas when the piston closes the intake like in a piston port you're not going to get any more fuel into the crankcase so that's why when you run a case read that's why they pull so much harder they just they get more fuel per stroke because 180 degree plus duration versus 110 to 160 and then these ones somewhere in the neighborhood of uh you know, you can get them almost to 180. This MXS cylinder actually does 180 degrees of intake duration. Well, anyway, I wanted to talk about piston port stuff. Um, in one of Big T's videos, his name's Tommy Griffin, he was talking about um, piston ports and the intake timing duration stuff. So I kind of wrote a little chart here. Um, basically, um, in one of my last videos, I was talking about um, the uh, uh, Husqvarna uh, Tilston carburetors. Well, anyway, that puff effect is a very unique thing, and I want to kind of dive into it a little more. So when the piston closes, it creates a pressure wave that comes out the intake, um, travels out the intake, and then when the piston opens again, it reverses directions and, and flows back into the intake. Well, depending on 
your length of your intake and where precisely you locate your carburetor, if you locate it really close, um, your low RPM range is going to be all rich until you start getting up into the higher RPM range. Because what it essentially is, and this is like a little graph, see we got RPMs, right? Low RPMs, higher RPMs, 9,000. And then this is uh, just a little writing that says intake puff. That's just what it means. So when you're at lower RPMs, your puff effect is greater, which means you're not trapping as much fuel in the crankcase. Uh, and as you increase RPMs, the puff effect essentially goes from a longer distance out the intake and starts to get shorter, which means if your carburetor is way out here and it's pulling an intake charge in and then pushing it back out, but it doesn't actually reach your carburetor to wash twice through the Venturi, then you're only getting whatever you jetted your carburetor at. But if you put your carburetor here and it has the puff effect push out and then wash back in, what you essentially did is the the swept charge goes out and then comes back in and picks up another amount of fuel in the exact same intake pass which richens the charge that goes into the case very interesting thing so if you have your carburetor too close to your engine with a piston port you essentially can make it really rich and you have to jet down but if you pulled that carburetor and placed it farther away from the engine, it would be really lean. So you kind of have to understand your timing. Um, this is another little graph I made here. So intake duration, puff effect length, for example. Like say if your uh, piston port has 110 degrees intake duration, your puff effect's going to be very small. It's not going to come out the intake very far because the piston window closes and opens very quickly whereas say you've got 170 degrees of intake duration where your piston has you know the skirt uh, chopped quite a bit it's gonna push that puff effect way out and then way back in um, because the piston has so much open time before it closes um, something to know about when your rpm is increasing is that as as the rpm increases the velocity in the intake tract starts picking up and pulling into the crankcase much faster. And what's happening is, as the intake velocity picks up, the, how do I explain it, the negative pressure in the ink in the crankcase becomes greater per stroke because of the pipe pulling through the system to pull extra fuel. And so you gain more of a negative pressure in the crankcase, which the positive pressure from the atmosphere pushing on the intake allows you to have better fill efficiency as you gain RPMs um, with a piston port. So piston port, I really like them. They're a lot of fun. You know, you kind of have low end RPM troubles, but as soon as they get on the pipe and start going, they're really, you know, got a lot of power, but limited power. Like for example, if you only have 110 degrees intake duration, as soon as that piston closes, that's all the fuel that's going to be in the system per that cycle. And when the pipe pulls, if it pulls hard enough, it will actually basically completely drain the, the fuel that's in the crankcase and use it in the chamber. But that's all it gets. On a, on a case read, it's going to pull extra with the pipe through the entire intake system, through the transfers, and give you even more per cycle. And that's why, you know, modern two strokes these days go with case reads. Well, anyway, um, another thing about piston ports is usable RPM range per intake duration. So on a 110 degree intake duration, your usable range is really low RPMs, you know, just putting around the street, 2000 RPMs idle, up to say 9000 RPMs. Around 9000 9, RPMs, you're your power is going to fall off because you're just not getting that much fuel. Uh, you know, your 120 through 140 range is your usable piston port range. Most people's engines are probably there. Uh, like 2,000 RPMs to 9,500, clear up to your idle being around 3,500 to, you know, if your, pist or your exhaust port's high enough, you're going to pull easily 10,500 RPMs out of your engine if you get a good pipe too. A lot of variables there. 
Um, also depends on your ignition, but we won't get into that in this video. Um, whoops. Erased my number there. Well, anyway. When you start getting your uh, exhaust durations into the higher range, like 150 through 170, your usability starts to go down because your engine is going to struggle to idle. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really have to be at a high idle or else all that fuel that you're trying to trap in your crankcase at a low RPM is just going to pop right out the intake. Um, a lot of people, they'll, what they'll do is they'll skirt their piston way high and then they'll run really crappy and they won't know why. Well, they won't move their carburetor at all and they won't rejet. So what's happening is they're getting a much richer amount of fuel and uh, the puff is going much farther out. If they would move their carburetor back a little bit or jet leaner, it wouldn't be so bad. But, you know, um, anyway, I would say the maximum usable range for intake port duration on a piston port is 170 degrees i've done it one time and <laughs> you got to crank your your idle way up um and basically either pedal up to speed help it you know because it's going to just kind of bog and not want to go or gear like a 44 or 46 tooth on the rear and just basically run around on the pipe all the time because the idle is going to be super high, but it's also going to be able to turn really high because it's pulling so much fuel once once the intake track gets pulling and the, the fill velocity into the case starts really going. You're going to have a lot of power, but it's only going to be from a certain point to another point. Um, so, I'm trying to think here. Um, another point is on this specific style a port read um not exactly this one this one's kind of a cheating thing you know mxs it's much faster than china girl stuff um on a port read you don't get the puff effect out the intake all your fuel that went into the engine is trapped through the reed valve it stops it from leaving um, but the only problem with the reed valve is is it acts as kind of like a blockage so with a piston port, with the port straight into, like carburetor straight into the port, you don't have any blockages besides the piston skirt. With a reed valve, you have essentially something in the way that kind of acts as, uh, what would I want to call it, like a wall almost, uh, a blockage, something like that, where your fuel has to go through it, kind of has to have a resistance going into it. Um, but once, once these engines get going and they're pulling on the pipe, and if your piston window doesn't block the port at all, like say on a China Girl jet, uh, you'll actually pull from the intake through the case, through the transfers, and out the exhaust when it, the negative pressure wave goes down the exhaust pipe and pulls, um, which is really neat. That's, you know, my favorite part about two strokes is getting on the pipe. <laughs> um something to know about case reads is they don't really run very good until the intake track velocity gets going through the engine really fast so if you have a really big carburetor going into a really big reed box um, with really big ports it's just going to be really slow until the pipe starts pulling so a lot of people complain with their case reads that it doesn't run excuse me very well doesn't get on the pipe very fast uh really hard to tune a lot of times people are way too rich in a case read um case reads like to be you know not rich but more of a mild tune with a lean top or not exactly lean that's not the word i'm looking for just not rich top if if you're rich with a case read anywhere in the entire rpm range it's going to fight to get on the pipe the whole time because it's just going to be so wet and so much fuel because case reads they kind of work 100 percent off the pipe um the pipe dictates dictates the entire engine's performance whereas an engine like this or this the pipe isn't going to dictate it as much being a port reader a piston port um well anyway that's about all i got for this video i don't want it to be too long i just wanted to explain a few things maybe tommy griffin can appreciate it a little bit um my favorite part is really just explaining 
the the puff effect length you know it it uh it really does change with um the degrees it really goes much farther but the farthest you want an intake on a piston port is like six and a half inches after that your uh your signal your vacuum signal into the port kind of starts getting weak and then the rpm range starts getting affected but uh so yeah that's all that's all i got hope you guys like the video and uh yeah i guess tune in for another one later thank you